we don't give just because. We give the way the word says to give. And I am living proof that when you give in faith, that means you know why you're giving. You're giving for a reason. And you're holding God at his word. Then God will show up for you. Now, your giving is not to pay my bills, glory be to God. Do you know why? You know who pays my bills? Jesus pays my bills, and you know who else? Me too, glory be to God. You know what? I have to use my faith just like you. The same way you tithe, I tithe. You know how often I tithe? You know how often? On every single bit of it. And as a result, you know what? Are you going to let me, are you going to be okay if I say this? Are you ready for this? I'm blessed, glory be to God. Blessed beyond measure, glory be to God. The word is working for me. Amen. So I, uh, every week I want to show you how to do it, how we're doing it, how it happened. If you've heard some of the testimonies about how this thing happened, this is how it happened. You've got to release your faith. And that is done with the words of your mouth. Amen. Amen. So we're going to pray. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. At the end of this prayer, we are going to, I'm going to lead you into a confession. And if you will mean that confession with your heart, faith will come out of your mouth and it will change things. Amen. Amen. All right, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you are our very own father. We are your very own children. You've translated us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light where we prosper and increase continually. Now, Jesus, high priest, we worship you, sir. We give you glory and we give you honor. And we bring our tithe and our offerings and our seed before you. And we worship you and ask you to take it to our Father. Worship him on our behalf. Dance before him for our benefit. Bless his very heart. And as a result, we believe we receive right now tithers' rights. That the windows of heaven be opened to us and the blessing be poured out in overflow. That the devourer be rebuked for our sake. That as we've given, it's been given unto us with good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Now, I want you to repeat this after me. Say, in Jesus' name, in Jesus name my, heart my heart is in my seed. Is in my, seed. my obedience, my obedience is, in my is in my tithe. And gratitude, and gratitude covers, it all. covers it all. I believe I, believe I, receive, I receive a return, a return. According, to according to the word with good measure. Press down, down, shaking together, together, running over. over. I have have more than enough, enough, and it's coming to me me now now in Jesus' name. name. Come on, give the Lord a shout. You believe it? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory be to God. Amen. You can have your seats. I tell you what, I uh, grew up with the family of tithers. Of uh, people, just people that just uh, our family was always taught to tithe, church family, and uh, we never thought about not tithing where the family was concerned. But I have seen people tithe for years and years and years and never really get any real benefits. And I tell you, it's because faith needs to be added with that tithe. Faith comes out of your mouth, can't stay in your mind. It's got to come out of your mouth. And that's why we practice that every single time we receive an offering here. We release it out of our mouth. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. All right, I want to really quick, I want to ask you to do me a quick favor. First of all, for those of you that are out here in person today, give yourselves a hand. Glory be to God. Thank God for you being out in the house of the Lord today, like Sister Robin said, the enemy told you to stay in the bed, but you said, devil, shut up. I don't listen to you. I'm going to church. Glory yeah. be to God. And uh, while you're at it, I also want you to give a hand to our online audience that may be joining us today. Let's do that. 
Glory be to God. We thank God for those of you that uh, tune in online, that support our videos and the content here. Um, real briefly, I want to mention that we have a goal right now that we have set in the media department, and that's to get to uh, a thousand subscribers on the church YouTube channel. And uh, this will give us the opportunity uh, to be able to go live on YouTube uh, as opposed to just Facebook. We know there's a, a lot of people that Facebook, Facebook is not their preference on YouTube, but allows us to expand our reach so that we can get this message out. Amen? Amen. And uh, also, in addition to that, I want to just acknowledge real briefly uh, the work that uh, Sister Tressa is doing with our media. Sister Tressa, why don't you stand up for a second? I want you to, I want uh, everyone to uh, give Sister Tressa a hand. Go ahead and let her know that you appreciate her. Glory be to God. Every single week and diligence as it relates to the word getting out. Uh, we know of people whose lives have been changed, people who have gotten answers as a result of the video, and the people that do that are working behind the scenes. They're not out in the front, they're not getting credit. Uh, and it does take work to do it, let me tell you. Glory be to God, consistent work. So we thank God for her concerning that. Um, by way of announcements, really briefly, I want to highlight a couple of things. Um, Brother Flowers, uh, for those of you that have been here for a while, um, Brother Flowers is somebody that we have been trying to wrangle down for, for some years now. Glory be to God in getting him here. Uh, many of you know uh, I consider uh, Brother Copeland a uh, spiritual father for me, and uh, Brother Flowers is pretty much almost as close as you could get to Brother Copeland. And uh, Brother Copeland, um, or Brother Flowers, uh, does a seminar, and that seminar is for um, uh, helps ministry. So uh, he has been here locally in Ohio previously, and has taught here. And uh, at this seminar, it's where we will invite multiple churches out, people even from other churches to come out and be a part of this seminar where he is really talking about how to administrate the helps ministry on a level. As you know, Brother Copeland is the biggest ministry literally on the planet. It is the biggest actual ministry on the planet. So you can imagine the things that they run into and the challenges that they face. And I think everybody serving in church needs to have an opportunity to hear what he is saying. Uh, I believe it's life changing. So it is an honor to us here that uh, someone of that nature would even consider coming to Anointed Word of Faith Church. So I'm excited about that. Isn't that good? Amen. Glory to God. Amen. We look forward to that. So that date, what's that date again? We have, we have to confirm. Okay, I believe that is going to be sometime in July um, or April. <laughs> um, it won't be on July the 4th, glory be to God, because I'll be out of town, have mercy. Uh, but we will get back to you on that date. Please be watching our website uh, <clears throat> at awfc.org to follow up concerning those things. Amen? Amen. All right, we're going to get ready to move into the Word. And uh, before we do that, uh, we, we still got to get this atmosphere right. Uh, can I ask, does anybody in here believe in praying in tongues? Yeah. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. I'm not talking about the tongues when you got saved. <laughs> that was the evidence of being filled with the Holy Ghost for you holiness people. Uh, or wherever you came out of, full gospel, Baptist, wherever you came out of. What I'm talking about is the prayer language of tongues that every believer that has been baptized in the Holy Spirit received once they got baptized in the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's the tongues I'm talking about. That's what I need to get the atmosphere right in here today. Now, if you've not been baptized in the Holy Spirit, you ain't got them. Glory be to God. You don't got these tongues. You don't know nothing about it. It ain't going to work for you. Right. When you try to speak, I don't know what you're speaking, but it ain't, you know. 
Now, you can have it, glory be to God. It's available for everybody. But I need you to believe God with me, and I need about, uh, I need about 60 to 90 seconds of praying in the Spirit so we can break whatever we need to break in the atmosphere. Paul says that he that prayeth in an unknown tongue prayeth not unto man, but unto who? Unto God. Then he says, how be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. That means secrets and revelation. Revelation to what's going on in the realm of the spirit comes out when we pray in this language. Amen. Can I get you to join me with that? Yeah. Now, those of you that are joining us online, I promise you we're not crazy. We just sold out, glory be to God. We just sold out and don't care what it looks like. Can you help me for about 90 seconds? Amen. Come on, let me hear that language. Kondele sembaratiana, shandorose keledo sonota, kasara matene korondale sitaba, mande sende korondale sende. Yeah, Lord, I see that. I see that. Masando korombaleti anda seko. Masandele se korondele korande seki. Mandoro seki ambo konda. Male seki anda baso korota. Mamba se de koronta ne si karandele se koronta. Hmm. What the confession? Mo sandele koronda. Mai karantono sa karete. Mambo bolasia. Mastan korote, maste koron deliki tara koran tere kota. Do you know, you don't have to copy a tongue that you hear on TV. You don't have to copy the same tongue, the same tongue that you hear just in different services. You know why? Because you got your own tongue, glory be to God. You got your own distinct prayer language. And I don't care what it sounds like. I don't care if it comes out like da, 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 da. Did you know there is a language in the earth that articulates itself that way? There is a language that articulates just like that. Da, 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 da. And the people that speak it all understand it. I don't care what it sounds like. You release that language by faith and boldness. Glory be to God. Come on, release that language. Come on, let's stand and let's do that. Let's honor the Lord in this place. My Libana so coronda, my carita neco, mastaro telesianda. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, listen, let me tell you this the spirit world responds to commanding words. Now, listen, I know some of you came in here with what you were dealing with. Yesterday, what you were dealing with this morning, I'm telling you, I need you to drop it. I need you to drop it. I need you to be willing to let it go, and we're going to let it go together. We're going to make a confession, and we're going to break the lazy, tired, weary, heavy spirit in this place. Glory be to God. Do you hear me? Some of y'all might end up running around the building. Glory be to God. I ain't going to set you down either. We've got to break it, and we're going to break it together. All I need is two people in here that believe that. Do I have at least two? Yeah. Now, if it ain't you, keep your seat. I ain't going to pressure you. All I need is two of you. Go be to God. Are you willing? Now, folks, you can't get too deep for God. You know, I remember when uh, I first started in the industry that I work in, and I was so cool, man. I mean, I was just the coolest thing on the planet. I, was, I would sit down with my clients and I would be like, Hi, my name is Al Cooper and I work for this company. And um, yeah, I'm going to be talking to you today about... And I had a manager come over to me. He said, uh, 
He said, cool, come here, come here, come here. Let me talk to you. You know, I was so, I said, what's up, man? What's, what's good? What do you need? He said, do you want to make money? He said, if you don't come outside of your comfort zone, you ain't going to make no money in here. He said, I want to challenge you. Just try one time to use energy and not care what you look like. I guarantee it will change everything. He said, I just try it one time. I said, you know what? I do got a got an old bill to pay this weekend. Glory be to God. Might as well make some money. I went down and sat down at that table. Come on, let me demonstrate how they come over here, sister. Come, come, come here, sister uh, Trey. Let me show you how I did it. Because you got that that uh, that energy. Glory be to God. I said, Hi, my name is Al Cooper. How are you? I'm amazing. They were like. <laughs> All of a sudden, the same people were open to me. Go and be to God. Now, you can't be too cool. You hear me? How are you? I'm going to be helping you today. We're going to have a fun time in here today. See, the enemy doesn't want you to do that. He wants you to stay laid back, carrying all the burdens of what's not fixed. This is how you get it fixed before you walk out to church. You got to break out of it. Do you receive that? Now, I want you to confess this with me. All I need is two of you. If the rest of you don't go, it won't stop it. All I need is two that will do this. Again, do I have at least two? Ooh, I got me an army in here. Glory to God. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to repeat after me. Say, in the name of Jesus. We break, we break the spirit of sorrow. The spirit of sorrow. We, break we break the spirit of grief. The spirit of grief. We, break we break the spirit of depression. The spirit of depression. Grief, grief, sorrow, sorrow. Take, your take your hands off of this place. Of this place. You, leave you leave and you go, and you go now. now. Now, wait a minute. There's one more. Are you ready for this? Say in Jesus' name. We declare, we declare that the joy of the Lord, the Lord that the joy, the joy of the Lord, of the Lord is, our is our strength. Now, come on, give him a praise. Give him a good praise. Hallelujah. Give him a praise. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now that thing should be broke. That thing should be broke. Oh, you was waiting on the ball to come out the sky to do it for you. Is, is that what you were waiting on? You know, I just heard it. I just heard it ministered this week and it's been ringing in me. David, in the most impossible circumstances, guess what he did after he lost his wife? All of his wives, you know, he had multiple wives back then, glory be to God. You're supposed to do that now. But he had multiple wives, lost everything, and David got up, and while he was being threatened by his own army, they were about to stone him, and he lost everything he had. The Bible says that David encouraged who? Himself. Encour you don't got to feel like it. It's not about how you feel. Are you waiting on the feeling? Oh, you've been, you been in the Baptist church, ain't you? You've been in the holiness church, don't you? You know, you got to feel something before you move. That's not how it works. Faith believes it before it feels it or sees it. Faith says, God, if you said it, I believe it, and I'm going to step out based on that. Faith says, God, the joy of the Lord is my strength. You said it, I take it. Therefore, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I'm stirred up right now in Jesus' name. Come on, give the Lord one more shout of praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right, take your seats. I believe I can preach now. I almost had to, I almost had to shut the door so we can go home. Glory be to God. I believe we'll run on and see what the end's going to be. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. I tell you what. You know, you know something. Let me tell you something interesting. They say that the job of the pastor, 
And the job of the preacher is to give the people something to say. Because in the kingdom of God, wait a minute, let, let me, can I back up? I don't know if I'm, I was supposed to be in a series right here. I was supposed to stick to my, to my series. I don't know if we're going to get to it. Wow. Now, you know, in the kingdom of God, or as a human being, the real you, you are a spirit. You do not have a spirit. The real you, you are a spirit. Amen. Like God is a spirit. Are you with me? Yes. Now all spirits have a soul. That is your mind, your will, and your emotions, your intellectual capacity, your imagination. Now, you know you have control over that part of you. Did you know that? Yes. Did you hear the song? That they were singing and offering. I command my hands. See, you command. You don't work for your body. You understand that? You don't work for your emotions. You tell your body what to do. You tell your emotions what to do. You tell your mind what to think. Not the other way around. Now all of that lives in a body. So you are spirit. You have a soul, and you live in a body. Now, the moment you got born again, you are now able to occupy two places at the same time. Your body gave you legal access to this physical earth, but because of the death and resurrection of Jesus, your spirit man was seated in a place of authority in heaven at the right hand of God. Amen. Do you understand that? Yeah. Do you understand? Well, you don't get it. You've been in church too long. You can't get no revelation. Do you know, uh, do you know going to church all your life, growing up in church, can I make a, a, a controversial statement? Are you ready for this? No telling, I might get myself in trouble in here today. Do you know going to church all your life, in a lot of cases, will absolutely ruin you? I mean ruin you. The people that are the most unresponsive to the power of God, the last people to get healed, the last people to walk in victory, the last people that faith works in are people that have been heavily indoctrinated in church. People that are so used to church, they know what everything's supposed to happen. Oh, that's what sister so-and-so do. That's what brother so-and-so do. They know the order of service, how the program is supposed to work. Now, why is that? Is it bad that you've gone to church? No, thank God. But... The problem is, there's been so much put in you that God can't break through it to get revelation inside of you. See, sometimes you need to be unlocked so that you can be woken up to the reality that God is a wonderful, amazing God. Amen. And if he's a wonderful, amazing God, you have the right to have a wonderful, amazing life, guess where? In the Here in the earth. Amen. Before you die. Glory Amen. be to God. Do you receive that? Receive it. Now, with that said, I guess I will, okay, Lord, I'll go back and just jump into this text because I think that is a good transition. Didn't know that it was going to go there, but glory to God. I need to, I need to give a disclosure. Okay, let me, let me give this disclosure. And uh, the first disclosure is it's hot in here, Jesus, but it's okay. That's the first disclosure. But, <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. I can handle it. I can handle it. Now, let me say this. The Bible says in the last days, 
and I'm going to paraphrase this so it's not super spooky. That people will have become so programmed by Satan and the world to the point that they will look for alternatives to the gospel. Does that make sense? And ministry in the last days are going to have to really preach the kingdom what the Bible calls in season and out of season. Because people will have developed a mindset that does not want to hear what the Bible calls sound doctrine. Okay? What do I mean by that? How can I make that a, a little plainer? I mean that People will want to, okay, let me say this. With the word of faith, everyone knows this is a faith church, right? What do I mean by word of faith? Word of faith is not a movement. It's not a sect. It's not a cult. It's not its own separate portion of the body of Christ. The word of faith means this. That the Bible works on purpose when you apply faith to it. Does everybody understand that so far? The Bible. So let me give you an example. The scripture says, Philippians 4th chapter verse 19. Can anybody quote it? What does it say? But my God shall what? Supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Well, word of faith says this, that that is true. And to get that to come to pass, you have to apply faith to that. Which means that it won't come to pass automatically or on purpose if you don't apply your faith to it. Are you with me? Amen. Now that's interesting because in religion, we, we've been taught differently. In religion, what we've heard is this. Watch this scripture, famous scripture. Are you ready for this? And we know that what? All things work together, what? For the good. Of those who what? Where are we in church? Where are we at right here? Can, can I, can, come again? Can you say it? <laughs> who love God and are the called according to his purpose. Uh -huh. So the assumption is when you get saved or born again, that no matter what happens, everything will work out for the good. Folks, there's too many Christians dead, broke, busted, and disgusted to stand on that argument. Amen. How do you explain so many people that are living less? I'm talking about Christians. You know, if you want to... Okay, Lord, I, I, will, I will correct that. Unfortunately, people that you in life or in society that seem to have the most struggle lifestyles are Christians. Some of us, when you was in the world, man, you was kicking it. You was having fun, going to the party. You was excited about going to the club this weekend. We're going out. You were making plans. You were traveling. How is it that we come over into this great kingdom and all of a sudden, good life an exciting life, a joyful life, 
is off the table. We've got to be missing something. No, I don't care how good life was before, this life is supposed to be better. Amen. Now you'll have to press into it. Because it won't come automatically. Are you with me? Yes. Now let me read this statement to you. Before I do that, let me pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for these, your precious people, and the opportunity to speak words from heaven, words that give life. And Lord, I pray that you would anoint me today. Give me utterance, Lord, that I could declare this word in excellence, accuracy, and boldness, that it be uplifting, that it gives life and has no condemnation in it. And Lord, help me to declare this with absolute boldness. Now, Satan, I break your power and I cancel your assignment. I decree that this word shall come forward unhindered by you or any of your camp. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now, I want to read this statement that the Lord had me write verbatim, and then we'll jump into this. I don't know how many minutes I got before it's time for you to go eat, glory be to God, and Get razzle-dazzle on me. I might need uh, some screens up here and that, that'll keep your attention. Have mercy. Now watch this. Concerning the goal of wholeness, this is what we are after in faith living. Actually, I tell you what, uh, Mason, why don't you come up here for me? Brother Ishmael, why don't you come up here for me too? I want to show you an example of something here. Stand right there for me, sir. You stand right there. Now listen. In the earth or in the body of Christ, there are two types of Christians. Let me clarify some things. In this case, both Christians are saved. What does it mean to be saved? You were born again. Being born again is not a process. You don't, over a period of time, become born again. Does everybody understand that in this church? Yeah. Those of you that go here, do you, do you get that? Amen. You don't get born again by accident. Does everybody understand that? You only get born again on purpose. Now, until you're born again, are you a Christian? No. What happens if a person dies and they've not been born again? What happens? If the Bible is true, that person goes to hell. So this born again subject is a pretty important subject. Can we agree? Amen. It doesn't happen by accident. Does it happen because your mom baptized you, took you to get baptized when you was a kid? No. Does it happen because they sprinkled water? No. Does it happen because once you were 35 years old, you came to church one day and said, Pastor, I want to be baptized. Did that cause you alone to be born again? No. no. In order to be born again, you had to recognize that you were not born again and that you were dead. You had to have known that. And then you had to ask Jesus to come into your heart. And there's one other thing you had to do. Sincerely repent. Amen. Now you could say I repent and didn't mean it in your heart. Won't well, nothing happen. You mean it from your heart. You repent, you ask the Lord to come in, you get born again. Amen. And there are signs that follow people that have been born again. One of the biggest signs is they change. They don't stay the same people they were. We're all on the same page about that. Amen. Now, in this case, we're talking about two Christians that have done that. They both have been born again. Let's say they both have been baptized in the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? Yes. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. Are you with me? Yes. 
One Christian lives by faith. He's saved. How my granny used to say it? Show sure enough saved. <laughs> my granny used to tell us when we were dating. My, uh, I come from a big church family and my granny was the matriarch. She didn't want unsaved women getting into the family. She didn't want, uns she didn't want the, the boys marrying unsaved women. And she would tell us things. She would say, she'll say to the son, I'm going to use my name. She said, Albert, she'll keep your house clean. She'll keep the kids clean and the clothes, but she ain't saved. <laughs> so she ain't saved. She ain't saved. And they said, I said, great, is she not saved? She said, yeah, she ain't showing up saved. <laughs> See, the old saints, they look right through you and say, no, you ain't living right. Now, now, in this case, both people showing up saved, right? This Christian lives by faith. This Christian does not live by faith. When they die, are they both going to heaven? Yes. Absolutely. Now, on the earth, who is going to have a better life? The one that lives by faith or the one that does it? Which one is subject to be in church every Sunday? Faith. No, the one that doesn't live by faith. You know, the religious folk come to church, they don't miss no church. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. All you got to do is put them on the deacon board or something, glory be to God. Give them something to do. They ain't going to be there now. No, <laughs> I take it back. Okay, okay. Now, watch this. The one that lives by faith the Bible says the victory that overcomes the world. What do I mean the world? The victory that causes the rent to be paid. The victory that causes promotions in the workplace. The victory that keeps that stays alive when Satan tries to kill them with carbon monoxide. Amen. The victory that has a person living daily with joy as though they are actually excited about life. Amen. The victory that owns businesses. Amen. The victory that finds his dream woman Amen. and marries her. The victory that finds her dream man and marries him. The victory that makes marriage, even after you've been in it 10 plus years, absolutely famous. Amen. You see? The victory that lays hands on the sick and they recover. Amen. That cast out demons and the demons go. That victory belongs to the faith Christian. Now, the Christian that's not living by faith, hear this, will absolutely try to get those benefits. And they will, in a lot of cases, try much harder than this entitled faith person you see that, that's where that's why it's, it's difficult sometimes for you to reach people you face people to reach people that are not in faith the other Christians don't understand because you just think you can believe God and manifest something and then it happens to you and they're like amazed but they know you don't really have the commitment to God that they have but faith is no respect of person. Glory be to God. Faith ain't always fair. Glory be to God. You believe it in your heart and say it out of your mouth consistently and believe what you say, it will come to pass. It's going to come to pass. Don't care if they like it or not. It's going to come to pass. Now listen, this believer will try really hard to get the benefits, 
only problem is they don't know how the kingdom actually works. They've not heard it. They just don't understand. Now, this faith believer, AWOFC, he can get results initially. But can I tell you something? This ain't going to, this ain't going to. Tear you down, is it? Are, are you okay? Do I have permission to say this? Yes. Watch this. This one can initially come in and get results. Anybody came into faith and right after you started hearing faith being preached, uh, like, Mosandeliaba, Santokorotasi. How do you know? Well, here are some signs of if you've ever heard faith being preached. If you've not heard of the blessing of Abraham, you've not heard faith being preached. If you've not heard about the laws of the kingdom, you probably have not understood faith yet. But for those of you that have, you'll come in initially and it'll seem like manifestation is going back to back to back. Everything, boy, just being fixed right away. The bills being paid, deliverance left and right. Woo, I would have tapped into something. Amen. But you're going to have to continually use your faith to sustain that level of living and to increase it. Are you with me? Yep. Now that's we're coming to church is super important. And it cannot be done if you are not consistently and constantly hearing and hearing and hearing how it works. Yeah. Now, one of the reasons for that, thank you guys, you can have your seats. One of the reasons for that is because the laws in the kingdom are laws that God has sworn to, and he swore that he would never change them. I've told this story before. Let me tell this story. Um, when I first found out about faith, found myself in jail. I was in Lexington, Kentucky, and I got caught for a robbery. I was guilty. Show sure enough guilty. Have mercy. I did it. Forgive me, Lord. Now... I found myself in jail, and I found myself facing what they call a PFO. Now, a PFO in that, out of that state is a persistent felony offender, which means if he had already been to prison for violent crimes, which I had, particularly related to guns, uh, you're okay with the fact that I have a, that I come out of the, the gutter. You're okay with that, right? That, that don't bother you, does it? You don't mind me telling it to you again, do you? If you stay here for another 20 years, you're going to hear it again for another 20 years. It is a monument, and I'm going to always talk about it. So get used to it, okay? Hopefully I didn't say that in an offensive way. Was that offensive? That wasn't offensive, says Tressa. No, you got to tell me now so I don't get in trouble now. Now, I'm in jail, and I find out, Mr. Cooper... What looks like, from the lawyers, you're looking at a life sentence here. You're looking at a life sentence. And, and somebody at one point, you know, the enemy will let bad news get to your ear easily. It's like, yeah, buddy, roll. You know, that's how they talk in Kentucky. Yeah, buddy, roll, you ain't going nowhere. You just might as well be real still because you're not leaving no time soon. It was at this time... Now, don't get me wrong, all the regular church people did their praying stuff. You know, they did their praying, they did their encouraging, their normal church stuff. You got to get tired of church stuff, you know that? But I had, somehow I got this magazine in there. And the magazine was called Victory Magazine. Has anybody ever heard of that? Life-changing, life-changing. 
And reading this magazine, I kept hearing, I saw a picture of this weird white guy. <laughs> this weird country white guy that I had seen on TV before. Now, you know, in the neighborhoods that I grew up in, you know, the, you know there wasn't, in our neighborhoods, when we walked down the street, you, you didn't see many, many white people. You know, that just wasn't the norm. You know what, can I tell, can I tell on my mama right here, you ready for this? She's saved now, but let me tell on her. My mom used to have us watching this movie called Mississippi Burning, glory be to God. Which is just the most dreadful bad news movie you've ever seen in your entire life concerning slavery and so forth because she had been hurt by the uh, white race and she wanted us to feel her pain, right? So here's this white guy, this country white guy on TV. And when I saw this guy on TV, you know what I thought about him off the top? This guy is a scam artist. This guy's a scam. Asking for, you know, he wants your money, all of this kind of stuff. This is fake spooky stuff. That's how I felt my whole life about seeing this guy on TV. And I had never one time actually listened to him. I came to the conclusion that it was fake having never ever listened to him myself. When I start reading what this man wrote in this magazine, I never knew. Now, I come from a long line of accomplished people in, in the word of God. You know, my great grandfather, you've heard the story, founder, great my granddad to this day, doctors of divinity degree, oversees his own denomination, uncles, overseers right now. I mean, we, my family had a Bible college. So you're not, look, we thought in our circles that we were deep. We, at one time, we thought that if you didn't go to our church, if you weren't connected to our organization, you weren't saved. Like, oh, don't worry about them. You ain't part of this. You ain't saved in the first place. Now, you know, you ain't, word of faith people, you ain't supposed to be doing that. Just because they don't go to a word of faith church does not mean they don't know the Lord. Just mind your business. That's all. Just mind your business. Don't hate. Let them live. Now, when I read this magazine <coughs> and I saw what this man was saying, my first reaction is I was mad at all the church people I had ever met in my life. Because I said, how could I have been in church all of these years? How could I have been ordained as a preacher and never know that this is how the Bible and how God works? I never knew that God was a good God. I never knew that his number one desire was to do good to you, to bless you, to make you a success beyond your wildest imagination, to protect you from every hurt, harm, or danger, and actually even make you famous. Are you okay with that? That doesn't offend you, does it? I had no idea. Now, what stuck out to me the most is the way they talked about love. I had never seen love displayed or discussed in this way blew me out the water. Right? Now, let me say this. And I think I'm almost out of time here. <coughs> what do you think, Sister Tress? Should we go and pack up and go home? What do you think? What you say? Now, you know I'm going to blame it on you if I keep going. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, really quick, look at this really quick. You should, it's good to look at the scriptures, follow along with them. People get healed at times just by scrolling through the scriptures. People get healed. You know, I heard a testimony yesterday. So, Tressa, can I, can I use your testimony? We had a, a meeting yesterday 
staff meeting yesterday. And uh, I got to hear a testimony from Sister Tressa that I'd never heard. Um, Sister Tressa, why don't you come up here really quick? I want you to tell that testimony. I'm hoping you can say it just the way you did it. The microphone for it, please. Just the way you did it yesterday. I think this is good to point out. Now, um, come on. I ain't going to bite you. Right there in front of that camera. Now, when you, you had mentioned that you had been going to church. Don't mention no names about church. So we don't talk about churches. Glory be to God. You've been going to church, and you made a statement about how you felt when you were in the atmosphere and about how you didn't want to leave the atmosphere when you were there. Pick up from right there for us. Tell us that. I didn't want to leave the atmosphere. Sorry. I didn't want to leave the atmosphere because I knew because as soon as I left that atmosphere, I knew there was going to be fights, there was going to be battles, there was going to be trouble right there waiting for me as soon as I left that atmosphere. So I would, I wanted to just stay. I didn't want to leave. So she's talking about going to church, and in other words, while the service is going on, she's good. She's famous. While the, oh, hallelujah, you know how you do. Hey, glory. Honda my Shanda. You know, that's the tongue y'all use right there. I don't know how the whole world has the same tongue. I don't get it. I didn't even know there were different tongues till I got over in the Word of Faith. I'm like, whoa, these sound like some old authentic tongues in here, glory be to God. The Word of Faith elders start shaking like, Lord, give them utterance. That ain't no tongue. Let me hear you speak again. <laughs> and uh, in the atmosphere... She felt good. I have the victory. But she was scared to leave because when she left, she knew that all of the trouble, all of the same issues and problems she was powerless to when she walked out the door. Is that right? right. Now pick up from right there. So um, when I was introduced to Word of Faith Church, um, and I sat in on the first teaching. The one, the first thing I noticed was that he taught something. He didn't preach it. He taught first, and I never experienced that. Now hold for a second. Does anybody experience? Do you uh, do you understand the difference? Do you understand by now the difference between preaching and teaching? I mean, listen, let me tell you, I went to a, I was in a church environment where they claimed that they were teaching. We thought we were hearing teaching. The pastors would stand up and say, we are teachers. Even though that's what they said, they were actually not teaching. They were preaching. Preaching will leave you temporarily encouraged, but there is no instruction or power to change your situation. You see? Now, do you know what puts people in the seats? Preaching and teaching. You need both, glory be to God. You can't handle 100% teaching. You'll be razzle-dazzle. But you're going to have to handle 90% of it, glory be to God, because that's what you're going to get here. You're going to get 90% of teaching. But if you just preach, chances are you're not going to offend people. Chances are you're going to make people feel good. Came out in the meeting too. Something else that was good. Hold that. I want you to finish telling that. I don't think I'm gonna be able to preach here today. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get to it. I'm just being led by the Holy Ghost. Just talking about the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now it came out 
that, okay, pastor, they come at first, and the first time they come and they hear that wonderful news about the blessing of the Lord, things like the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow to it. Amen. Then after they come back a few times, then they find out, okay, you're going to have to walk in love. <laughs> you're going to have to learn how to use your faith. You're going to have to spend time meditating in the word. You're going to have to forgive. See, and that is where, unfortunately, at times, people get razzle-dazzle. But you know what we're supposed to do? Keep teaching it. You know why? Because at some point, things in the earth are going to get so bad for the people that are out here in life without a covenant that the only place they will have to run to will be in the church. And when they come in, they're going to need to know how to get their bills paid by faith. They're going to need to know how do I get healed when I've been diagnosed with a terminal illness that cannot, or that there's no cure for. How do I deal with it? Now, those of you that are in the church now, you're supposed to be learning how to get built up and skillful in these things so that when they come in, you can minister to them. Now, you won't be able to minister to them if you don't learn it yourself. You've got to learn how now. The, you, are, you are going to become, in Jesus' name, skillful at knowing how to get the bill paid. You're going to learn how to use your faith and hear how to get your bill paid. Glory be to God. You're going to know what it is to sow a seed. You're going to know what it is to believe God and get manifestation. You're going to know what it is to get healed. You hear people coming in here talking about how they got healed. When, we, when Chelsea and I went out and preached to them, you're going to learn how to do the same thing. You're going to learn how to cast out demons. It ain't going to be just Pastor Al's story casting out 30 plus demons. You're going to go out and you're going to cast out demons. You're going to see the power of God work. But I got to get you built up so you ain't scared. Okay. Scared to just sit at home in your own little quiet circle, go to work every day and do nothing. Yeah. Got to get you built up in the faith. Glory be to God. Is that good? Yeah. Okay, now, say, what happened? Well, what happened from there? You said you came and you heard teaching. What did you hear? I heard good news. Glory be to God. <laughs> life-changing words um, that uh, positivity you know it was I remember that first day and, and I was like man I need I need a notebook I told uh, the next time I went I told Victor I was like uh, I need I need to take a notebook you know I was it had to be with me because I had to write this stuff down did you take notes before that at all in church no, I never took notes before in church never do you I wanted y'all to hear that <laughs> I wanted you to hear it she never took notes in church before. When she started hearing faith, she started hearing teaching. In other words, line upon line, precept upon precept, she would hear something like this. Okay, faith is the victory that pays my bills and heals my marriage, but faith only works if the law of love is kept. You see? So she would have written down, you need to write down things like, okay, I need to walk in love, and then my faith will work, and then I'll go get my new vehicle. Amen. Do you see that? Yes, that's good. Now, if, now, how do we rub people the wrong way? Because the average person coming to church has been shaped by church culture that says you don't need to participate 
that you just need to be entertained, mm -hmm. sit back and be entertained. Yeah. So when you're challenged, word of faith will challenge you, you're going to have to do something. Yeah. Amen. You're going to have to do something. You're going to actually have to get involved and do something, and that makes us uncomfortable. Yeah. It can make you uncomfortable. Not everybody, obviously, but some people or the vast majority of us, it will make you uncomfortable in the sense of, man, I ain't got time to be going home reading no Bible every day. <laughs> or watch this. I'll just pray. I'm not going to actually get in the word. You see what I mean? Religion teaches you to pray. It doesn't teach you to go to the word first. Religion won't teach you that your prayer won't work if you don't know the laws. See, religion won't teach you that. Religion will tell you just try hard and be sincere and somehow God is going to come through. No, I'm trying to tell you the total opposite of that. I'm trying to tell you, you already have the victory. You've got to learn how to appropriate it. But what church people want to do is just be down on the, you know, fast at 40 days and 40 nights. You're struggling before the fast and you're struggling after the fast. Something's not working. You've been praying the same prayer for 10 years and it's not worked. Maybe an adjustment might need to be made. Can you be open to the possibility that an adjustment is necessary and then that doesn't feel good? No. Now listen, we're going to be in this subject of love for a long time, I'm just Amen. telling you. So you may got a little bit of break today, but we're going to be right back next week, glory be to God, on this subject. As I want to let you know this, as I go through this series of love, this is the most challenging subject I have and ever will preach in my life. Do you hear that? Because this is something that deals with all of us, man. I'm t I got to taste it before I preach it every time. I'm like, all right, Lord, let me wait before I preach that. <laughs> yeah, I don't, you know, give me a little time, you know. Yeah. Can I get a week or two? Because, you know, pastor and preaching, you got to, you got to heal up between Sundays. Whatever, whatever punches you've taken spiritually or whatever way, you got to be healed and you got to come back in Sunday with a smile on your face. You got a wife like mine, you come in here and not smiling. She's going to be like, babe, you need to be smiling. <laughs> I said, thank you, Lord, I receive it. Yeah. Now, you said there was a message that you heard taught of something you had been dealing with. Do you remember what it was? Starts with an F. Talk about that. So um, I had been dealing with fear of dying. I was afraid to die. Um, I would have these thoughts that I would get in a car accident. I would have visions of the accident happening, and right, you know. And uh, so he started to preach on fear and how fear. The, the exact thing that you fear will happen to you. Uh -huh. And I never heard that. And it just, it hit me. And I, I, I took notes, of course. And now, now look at that right there. <laughs> Can I show you this in yeah. church? Did you hear that, what she said? Yeah. Yeah. Now, you're not going to hear that in regular church. Oh, no, you're not. You're not going to, and I'm not trying to exalt this church above it. That's not the point. All, everything that I know has been, I, I've studied under people that have walked it out and gotten results. Amen. See? And I go in that word and see it for myself. Thank God that, that thank God for the Brother Hagans, for the Brother Copelands and so forth. But all of this time in my life going to church, and I wasn't a casual church member. You know, you always, you got your category of people in church. You got your faithful, you got your semi-faithful, and then you got your every now and then. I was a 
I was like a Sister Shaby, front row, faithful. Like, man, where's the door? The door open yet? I'm, I'm here. Now, them, you can't stop them kind of Christians. I just want you to know that. Christians like that will always get benefits much quicker than other people. I'm telling you, that's how it works. The Lord will skip over a million people to God to find the person that is walking in faith and obedience. I'm telling you. But I was one of them, you know, Sister Tressa's glory be to God. I was right wherever the pastor was, whatever his agenda was, I was there. If something was changing, I was one of the ones getting the phone call. I never heard anything like that in my life. That the law, that fear was a law. That whatever I feared the most, I actually licensed to come into my life. When I found that out, I was like, oh, Lord, I better get over these lions and tigers and bears when I go out here camping. <laughs> Glory be to God. Now, now, what was off-putting to me is out of going, if, when I went on the internet, on YouTube, and there's so many preachers, so many preachers, and I checked. All of them seem to be saying the same kind of things, right? When I got over here to Word of Faith, these people were talking crazy. They'll talk crazy. I mean, it was totally different. Till this day, let me tell you, I only feed on Word of Faith. Amen. Because I... I can't maintain supernatural living listening to people preach natural instead of supernatural. You know what it happened to me when I first found out about Job? Oh, yeah. Is anybody, what, anybody in this church, what happened when you, did it shock you when you first found out that God didn't do those things to Job? Yes. Did it make you nervous, mad, and scared all at the same time? Like, oh, uh, you up here live preaching. You've been used by the devil. I never knew that all those horrible things that Job went through, God had nothing at all to do with it. Great songs. Great gospel singers. Uh, one of my favorite songs is by a group called Men of Standard. And... Uh, one of the singers, uh, Isaac Curry, that boy sang. That boy sang. I'm telling you what. And uh, what's the name of that song, Chelsea? Um, uh, what, what's that song? Uh, Yet will I trust in Him. And uh, there's a part of the song is uh, um, to talk about the darkest hour. You know, all the gospel music is talking about the darkest hours, <laughs> all the storms, and carrying on. Right. The darkest hour is just before the break of day. Where's the daylight? Where's the daylight? Can we skip over that and get to the daylight? And they get to talking about Job. Here's the famous, especially you grew up in, in, a, black, in, in a, a black church. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Job had no idea what he was talking about because God was not slaying him. And Job later on had to admit that. Yeah. See, it's the teaching that will release you from those bondages. Amen. So now when something bad is happening, instead of you concluding that God is trying to teach you a lesson... You step back and say, whoa, devil, you trying to take my stuff. In Jesus' name, you better take your hands off of me. Amen. You see, you'll talk back to the devil versus sit there and get your head beat off. Yeah. Here, your, here your kids done died of cancer and everything else, and you're being told in church 
to thank God because it's his perfect will. That is absolute trash and ridiculous. You know you can't really serve a God like that. You kill my kids, I holler at you. I ain't got no rap for here. I'm done. I'm done. And it has been preached and is being preached. It is it represents 95 plus percent of all of the gospel message preached on the planet are preaching that right now. The only place you're going to hear it preached differently is in the word of faith. And you know what happens to the word of faith people when they start preaching it? Well, they got hell to pay. Glory be to God. Let me rephrase that. Persecution. Because if you're going to walk in the blessing, Satan is going to do everything he can to try to stop you. Now, folks, I'm, I came here to tell you that have been living by faith. I know it may not be the easiest, but it's the highest. Glory be to God. <laughs> I'm telling you what, it may not be the easiest. You may have to really dig in. You may have to correct some things. You may have to make some changes. You may have to humble yourself. Glory be to God. But I'm telling you, it is the best life. Glory to God. I'm telling you, God will make you rich. Amen. Yes, you will. You'll get to a point to where, man, a hundred thousand dollars don't even move you. Hundred thousand dollars don't even move you. I remember in the beginning, boy, when our when Chelsea and I first started the company. And why do I keep talking about the company? You need me to talk about it. Do you understand? Be hating about it. You shouldn't be jealous. And you see me coming here with some new shoes on. You should be congratulated. Sow a seed to me. Yes. Then you go get you some. Glory yes. be to God. Right. And I don't even care about shoes. Right. I got all kinds of shoes. I don't even hardly wear them. I be, I be rotating the same. I be rotating the same hat. You know, when I first started my company, Chelsea and I talked. I'm just talking about the Holy Ghost, baby. Is that okay? I'm just talking to Chelsea about the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. You know, all of my employees, all of my original staff members, had better cars than what we had. So you just see, you go out and look at the cars now, the house, and you just get razzle dazzle. You you don't you haven't heard this whole thing. See, all of them. We were. Let me tell you this. Our very first training class, we had to hire people to start working. They had to start training, and they wouldn't be able to start work for at least three to four weeks later. And they would only get paid if they were successful on the week they started. And that pay wouldn't start until two weeks after that. Yeah. And in that first training class, we were on food stamps. So Chelsea took them food stamps, glory be to God, and went and got the most gourmet meal set up for the training class, glory be to God, where you would have thought that you went into a banquet or something, the way she had stuff set up at the Columbus Library is where it was. Amen. Like, oh yeah, we got all the tools in here, glory be to God. Free in that library. And we would be so, our car was so bad. You know, when you here you are, the owner of a company, you got people to come and work for you, you know, they will see if you ball it, right? Well, we weren't balling yet. Our car was so bad that we would try to park <laughs> somewhere where none of our staff could see what we were really driving, and they still seen it anyways, didn't it? We couldn't even hide it. They showing up in, uh, what's that with the A, you, uh, A what kind of car? Audi, uh, Audi. Audis and Mustangs and carrying on. They got iPhones. We still on Boost. They still rocking Boost to this day. Glory be to God. Ain't gonna change it. Ain't gonna change it. And later on, I started to talk to. I said, "What sense does it make for you to be paying thousands and thousands of dollars for this stuff, and I'm writing your paycheck and I'm not doing it? What? What do you? What are you missing right here? Now." We had to learn these laws. And pertaining to love, love will challenge you 
to take a look at yourself and give the, you the opportunity to change it if you want to really prosper. You can choose to get mad and run from it and try to do life on your own, or you can submit to the Lord and say, you know what, Lord? I'm going to do it your way. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep going until I get this thing right. I refuse to let go. Bulldogs over here. Do you understand that? We don't stop until we get what we're believing for. Do you understand that? We keep believing until we get it. But all this back and forth stuff. This is my last story that I got to go. Chelsea and I, we heard about faith people believing God for supernatural pregnancies. Some of you have heard this. I mean, supernatural pregnancies, glory be to God, where you have the baby and they would preach it so good. Did we cut off? Okay, there we go. Glory to God. They would preach it so good and say, God has made a way that by faith you are redeemed back to the state of Adam and Eve. Glory be to God. So when you have this baby, in Jesus' name, there'll be no pain. That baby will just pop right out. No complications, no nothing. Well, we set out believing that. Because we heard it, and we go through, the, through this time period, and here it is time for Chelsea to have the baby. Some of you have heard this. When Chelsea had the baby, it was the most God-awful pregnancy I ever seen or heard of in my entire life. It was absolutely miserable. I cried like a baby. I wasn't even having the baby. I'm crying. <laughs> My girl, baby, you okay? I'm sorry. Can I get you some ice? <laughs> Three or four epidurals. All of them failed. Oh, Folks, we had been confessing. Thank you, Lord, that we have the baby. Sister so Christian was in there. She's like, yeah, that's why I ain't having no kids. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I ain't having no kids. And, but we were in faith, Right? When it happened, you know what we did? Let me tell you what some people will do. So I see, I knew this faith stuff don't work. Look at it. Look at it. Didn't work, did it? I knew this a lot. That kid of Copeland, the old devil, I'm about preaching. You know, that's what people do. You know what we did? We said, Lord, if it has been missed, we know there's no failure in your word. If there is an adjustment to make, it's on our part. Glory to God. So Lord, show us what to do. Yeah. And you know what he showed us? Are you ready for this? You know what he showed us? Yeah. He said, Al, Chelsea, you were never in faith for that in the first place. Yes. Did you get that? Yes. Yes. What do you mean you were never in faith? Well, when you're in faith, you find the promise, you put it in your eyes and your ears and meditate on it day and night while declaring it until you are absolutely convinced that it is true. Right. Listen, Brother Copeland used to say, and I say this to you guys all the time, hopefully you'll connect the dots. You needed about 30 days before you even took your faith stand with the promise to get assured. Yeah. Those of you that have been here over a year, two years, three years, do you do that with your promises? Yes. Have you gone first and really gotten assured that that promise applies to you? Yes. See, Philippians 4.19 may be true, but it may be I may have an assurance of it and you don't. Yes. I will get the victory and you won't. Yes. Well, we found out that we had just been confessing. We hadn't been depositing that word. We weren't convinced. Proof of it is when the trial came, we were scared. Yeah. We were in fear. When what you're believing for, if fear is there, faith is not. Yeah. And when we saw that, you know, we learned two lessons. We will never try to live somebody else's faith. Yeah. We will start where we are willing to believe for. Amen. Meaning where we are willing to do the work and put that word in to get convinced. Yeah. 
And we will never take a faith battle without doing the work. We ain't going to just be running around confessing for no reason. It doesn't work. Somebody's done that. Glory be to God. Well, I want to turn this around for you. That's why I want you to know that you are the one that has derailed my message today. And I have some instruction for you. It's okay. Dust yourself off. Get back up. Let's go at it again. Start with the promise. Go find the promise that covers your situation and begin to become acclimated with it. You need to be putting it in your eyes and your ears every day like there is nothing more important. Until you get convinced that it is absolutely bigger than whatever you are naturally facing. That's where you start. Did you get something out of that today? Come on, let's give the Lord a praise for that. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, sis. You can have a seat. Uh, actually, let's have everybody standing. We're going to, I'm going to stop right there. I know that our series a media team, I don't know what you're going to call it, glory be to God. Call it an exhortation or something, I don't know. But I really believe uh, I needed to go the direction that the Spirit of God told me to go here today. And uh, I pray that you find your part in this. The Lord has spoken to you about your part. you got to respond to it. There is no magic in this church. There is no abracadabra. There is power, and it has just been released. What will you do with it? You take it. How do you take it? You agree with it and say, I receive it. How do you, do you think it? Do you just think you receive? No, you got to say something. Lord, I take it. I have it right now. It's working for me. Woo! Glory be to God. I see the adjustment. I come into agreement with it right now. In the name of Jesus, Satan, I break your power over the people of God. You liar. You've tried to complicate that which is so simple. You've tried to steal hope. Well, we break your power and cancel your assignment today and we say, devil, we ain't done in the name of Jesus. We're not out. We're not finished. We are not going through. We are going over in the name of Jesus. We refuse to be denied. We will not be stopped. Thank you, Lord, for the love walk. Love is in us. We're in love, Lord, and we forgive. Come on, right now in the name of Jesus, you just need to forgive some of the things. I, I, I know that that person interacted with you like you were not intelligent enough. And you just got to forgive right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, you just got to let it go. Say, I release that in the name of Jesus. I don't take any account of that wrong done to me. I let it go in the name of Jesus. Yeah, I, I know you were looked over at work in the name of Jesus. I know that you were passed over and you should have been considered. But in the name of Jesus, we forgive right now, Lord. We let that go in the name of Jesus. Yeah, I know that they said that to you and that hurt your feelings, that made you feel low about yourself. And this person is supposed to love you and is supposed to care for you. But Lord, it hurt. And the Lord says, I know it hurt. Give it to me. I will heal it. But you must forgive. Hallelujah. You got to let it go. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, you got to let it go because that, that's... That sickness keeps reoccurring because you keep holding on to the unforgiveness. You got to let it go and healing will sustain. You, listen, you will get further in your career, in your finances, if you will forgive. Not forgiving is holding up your money. It's holding up your increase in the name of Jesus. Not forgiving is keeping your faith from working in the name of Jesus. 
male coronda le sia coromba la sicca. You get accused, somebody, you get accused of a disposition that lacks empathy, that lacks concern, and people even think that you don't have compassion for other people. Well, I, I want to minister to you today. It's because the Lord is trying to get you to grow. And uh, a portion of it is true. In your heart, you do really want to care for people, but your care alone isn't enough. You've got to start showing it. So you've got to come out of your comfort zone. You're going to have to go learn what it is to come out of your comfort zone and be nice to people. Take things that you otherwise wouldn't take. You're going to have to learn. And the Lord says, if you cooperate, I'll take you higher. I'll make your relationships better. I'll cause things to be better with you than you ever dreamed. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, Lord, I pray and I come against the spirit of sorrow and grief that tries to wait on these people when they leave out of the door. Satan, I break your power. Sorrow, grief, we talk back to you. You don't have any dominion over us. The joy of the Lord is our strength. We are expecting good things to happen to us. We're expecting good things today. We're expecting good things tomorrow in the name of Jesus. We decree that our futures are bright. Yes. Amen. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Now, right now, I pray for anyone that may be online that has backslidden. And you say, Lord, I know that who that man is preaching about is you, and I know you're real, and I've made a lot of mistakes. I've gotten way further out than I ever thought I would, but Lord, I feel you calling me back. Lord, I even see that you do good to me to get me back to you. Well, Lord, I want to come back to you today. That's what you're going to need to tell them. Say, Lord, I turn from my sin. I repent of my sin. Bring me back into fellowship with you. I come running right now. Restore the joy of my salvation. And I believe if you prayed that, that the Lord heard it, and it's being done right now. You claim it, you take it, get in your church. We also pray for those that don't know the Lord today. If you don't know the Lord and you want to know him today, it starts with a simple prayer that says, and we're all going to say this prayer with you online. I want you to repeat this after me. Say, Lord, Lord I, believe I believe you're the Son of God. Jesus, you died for my sins. You died, you died so I can have a good life, so a, good life. a wonderful life, a wonderful life. In, the in the earth and in the world to come. And in the world to come. Forgive, me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. I sincerely. Repent, Repent, and I turn, and turn my, life my life over to you. Over to you. Save, me. Save me, make me born again. Me born again. In, Jesus name. In Jesus' name. Come on, give the Lord a hand praise for that. Amen. Amen. We believe if you did that, that exactly what you prayed, I don't care how you feel. Exactly what you prayed happened. It took place. You claim it. You don't let go of it. It's real. Don't care what the devil says or how you feel. It's real. You step out and say so. Amen. In Jesus' name. Come on, do you receive it today? Did you get something out of that today? Hallelujah. Come on. Oh, we all have a praise real quick. Come on, just give a praise. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, things are getting better for you right now. Glory be to God. Today, things are changing for you right now. Glory be to God. Woo! Good things are in your future right now. 
Listen, I got news for you. That setback was just a setup. Glory be to God. You're being set up for something to happen to you that's much better than you ever even imagined. Glory be to God. See, the devil tried to tell you that you took a step back. You actually took two steps forward because you have matured in a way that you never have before. Glory to God. Woohoo! By faith going forward. Let's take the journey. Can we take it today? Can we take the journey? The journey of a good life, a faith that I'll never give up, that I won't be denied, that the word will work for me. In Jesus' name. Come on, give him one more shout. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. I want to thank sincerely every last one of you for coming out. I don't care how many seats are empty. I thank God for Amen. those seats that are full in here today. Amen. We appreciate you. We count it an honor and a privilege that you would even allow us to speak into your life. And uh, we truly believe that what is in front of you is much greater Amen. than anything you ever seen. You ought to get your shout shoes on to get excited about it. Glory be to God, I'm telling you. If you can see it, you can have it, baby. I'm telling you. You can have it. Dreams do come true. Glory to God. Amen. We want to want you to be mindful. We want to invite you back tomorrow, uh, those of you that are online as well, to our kingdom finance class. Yes, the uh, cat is out the bag. We trying, we're learning how to get rich in here, glory be to God. Because we found out that we're already rich. We're learning how to cooperate with what, that which is already ours. Amen. We invite you back out tomorrow at Bible study in our kingdom finance class. We are on week number three. That starts at 6.30 here promptly, and it is a live recording. We look forward to seeing you. Amen? Amen. If all hearts and minds are clear, Amen. am I missing anything? You know what they used to say in the old church? They would start singing this song. Friendship with Jesus. <laughs> so, Pastor, we don't know that song. Thank you for coming out. Consider yourselves dismissed. <laughs>